Uh, good afternoon. Uh, today is a rainy Thursday. It's May 19, 1988, and we're uh, here at the home of Mrs. Beatrice Siemens Martin on um, uh, 98 Rosedale Avenue in Hastings on Hudson. Um, my name is Joanne Dorico Troutman, and as part of the oral history of the Hastings Waterfront Project, sponsored by the Hastings Historical Society, I will be interviewing this afternoon Mrs. Martin. Uh, for her recollections of the Hastings Waterfront during her girlhood and her adolescence, specifically from the years, say, 1905 through the 1930s, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Martin, uh, you've been very accommodating this afternoon and giving me a little bit of the background of your, um, your life here in Hastings and showing me some pictures of your children and your grandchildren. But let's go back and let's begin at the beginning, if we could, um, tell me a little bit about where you were born. You mentioned that you were born in Irvington. Could you tell me what uh, year that was? 1901. 1901. So you told me this year you're coming up on your 87th, 87th, 87th birthday. birthday. Okay, you'll be celebrating over Memorial Day, I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about um, your brothers and your sisters and how large your family was. You were going to tell us a little bit about your brothers and your sisters. I have these are living in Baltimore. Uh-huh. This is Jane. Uh-huh. And Gwendolyn. Uh-huh. Irving is deceased. Frank and Henry are deceased. Three brothers are gone. Mm -hmm. I have one brother, Richard, in Illinois. Uh, Sherrod, Illinois, and he was born on my 13th birthday. And let's see. Jane is in Baltimore, Gwendolyn's in Baltimore. She's Frank and Henry. Catherine is in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And Dorothy's in Georgia. In Georgia. Uh -huh. And Evangeline is deceased. Mm -hmm. right, so that's a total Illinois. of how many? Um, ten brothers and ten sisters? No, not twelve. Um, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh huh. So that you had the two that I've received. Okay, well that that's okay. So well, there were ten of you all together then as children, right? Yeah. Okay, and you were the second yeah. oldest. Right. You were the second oldest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sh and my s this one is still alive. That's Jane. And, and Gwendolyn is still alive in Baltimore. Those two are in Baltimore. Uh huh. Irving is deceased. Right. And Catherine is in Connecticut. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, Evangeline, oh, she's deceased. And Dorothy's in Rome, Georgia. Okay. All right. Do you still get to see Jane and and uh, Gwendolyn? Yes, they and come on once in a while. Uh -huh. I haven't seen Jane in a while, but I was down there visiting. Uh huh. Uh, I mean, I ha that she hadn't been to Hastings. But Gwendolyn was here last year. Her, her grandson and her nephew drove her up from Baltimore. Well, with such a nice big family, you must have had a lot of playmates and a lot of uh, distractions. I don't right. think you could probably get very much done, right? No, right. <laughs> well, growing up, the girls all uh, waited on the boys. <laughs> it was just like the boys were spoiled by my mother. Well, now, where did you first live when you were growing up as a child? What, did you live here in Hastings in Tower Ridge? At that point, or had you, were you living up in Washington Street? Uh, Washington Avenue. No, we first came to uh, on Broadway. I don't know what that little street is that was in off Broadway to uh, behind where Dan Meyer used to live. Uh huh. Okay. And, and you first lived there for how long? Uh, well, I, then we moved to Maple Avenue, mm -hmm. down Maple Avenue, and that's where I started kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where did, you, where did you go to kindergarten? Here in the Hastings School. Uh huh. Okay. And then the Sunday School and First Form Church mm -hmm. when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long did you live on Maple Avenue in the Cat and Horn House? Was that just a few years? Or? Yeah, just a few years. We moved almost in every house in Hastings. Mm -hmm. And then for me, that was a new baby in the family. <laughs> oh, I see, because you outgrew the houses, so you had to go to a bigger house. Right. So after Maple but, Avenue, then where did you um, move? We lived up on Washington Avenue. That's where I went to kindergarten. 
up on the top. I don't think the house is there anymore. There were two small cottages up the top of Washington Avenue. And I think that's where the Broadway arms or some arms of uh, uh, tenement house or uh, apartment house uh, now. Uh -huh. And I think that's where the little house was where I was born. That's how we were acquainted with the Whaley girls and we used to go down there. And play with them. And you said those were the little girls who lived in the, what is now the Hastings Cottage. Uh -huh. The historical society. I had the red curly hair and Mrs. Steinschneider named her baby Beatrice after me because she liked my hair. She liked your fire red hair. <laughs> oh, how nice. Okay. All right. Now, you mentioned um, that you outgrew each house that you lived in. What was the last house that you, that you remember living in when all of you were growing up? The last house? On Main Street. 32 Main Street, where uh, who had the lawyer's office there? Uh, I think he's moved out of town now, but the, you know, Raiola's house is uh -huh. on Main Street? Uh -huh. with, with three or four houses in a row, we live in the second one. I see, okay. So you, you're right, you have lived in a lot of houses in Hastings. I bet you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. You've been around. <laughs> okay. Um, when you lived in the Cattenhorn house on in Tower Ridge, mm -hmm. uh, you said you only lived there for a short amount of time because you said the family was expanding. Um, do you remember if you had um, plumbing men and you had hot water and, and heat and so on at that point? You mean in the big house next to where, on, on Maple Avenue? On Maple Avenue. Mm -hmm. Well, see, we lived in the lower part of Maple Avenue when I started kindergarten. Okay. You mean down by the... Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. There's the two or three... Up the street from the, from across the municipal building, you right. know, up the street there. Right, at the dead end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we lived there for a while, and that's where I started kindergarten from Maple Avenue. Okay. All right. So you said you would walk to school mm -hmm. and then walk up to the the element to the kindergarten right. and then to the elementary but, school. Well, we used to when we were younger, and uh, I mean when I started school first, my father was a coachman. His father bred horses over in England. They came from England, my mother and father. Uh -huh. And they came out here and got married. My father came first, and then my mother came out, and they were married in Irvington, and that's where we lived couple of years before we moved to Hastings. He was a coachman. His father raised horses. So his, uh, he was a coachman for Dr. Gowen across from the Zinder Estate up on Broadway. Uh -huh. And he used to come and take us to school. We had more friends at that time because all the children in our class would congregate at our house and my father would give them a ride up to school. Uh -huh. And especially when there was a sleigh in the winter time and they'd all want to pile in on the sleigh. He First he would take his horse down to the Hastings station on the way back and stop in the house and have a second breakfast and then take us to school. And oh. all the kids would be white. They want to ride on the sleigh. Now, by a coachman, you mean well, a horse, take care of horses. Take care of the horses and, and drive into the driving. station to pick up the boss. And, uh, so it would be like a chauffeur, more or less, but before they yeah. had automobiles. That's right. When they got their car, he wouldn't take driving lessons. He didn't want to be a drive a car. Oh, he just really wanted right. to stay but as a coachman. I had coachman. two uncles that lived in New York, and they were coachmen, and then their boss, so they worked for a Jewish couple of Jewish families, uh, plenty of money, and they used to ride, he used to ride up to Hastings and bring them up to Longview restaurant up there, leave his boss and the wife and family up there and come down to our house, and then he would take us all through the village on the oh, horse. Oh, nice. <laughs> no wonder you had a lot of friends. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. Good. Okay. Now, this, what you're speaking of the time before your father worked at Sensor Chemical. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Right, right. So right. what years now are we talking about when he did the coachman's job? Would you say when you were in the garden? worked in Irvington, we came to, he came, my mother and father had cousins in Irvington that came out from England. They came from England, all of them. And they stayed with them and he worked for Dr. Uh, for Manning in Irvington. Mm -hmm. and that name, he was a, worked in the city and my father used to have to take him down to the train station in Irvington. See, and we came to Hastings, I think I was about three or four years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be been before I started kindergarten. Before you started kindergarten. But I started so kindergarten from Maple, the lower part of Maple Avenue is where we lived. So it would be about 1903, 1904. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. 
Do you remember much about the house on Maple Avenue in terms of what it looked like at, on the inside? The first house we lived mm -hmm. in? Oh, it was a three-family house. We were on the first floor because it had a big porch in front. It's still standing. I think I don't know who lives there now. But a, up the street from the uh, municipal, municipal building. building. But there's a couple houses there belong to Burbot mm -hmm. with our land. Mm -hmm. And we lived on the first floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after that house, that's when you moved up to the other end of Maple Avenue. No, we moved up on top of Washington Avenue, and that's where I started kindergarten. Oh, okay. Oh. Near the apartment house up on the top of Washington Avenue. Oh. There was a little old-fashioned house there. I think they call those the sugar houses. Isn't that what they call the sugar houses that were up at the top? Did they have a little gingerbreading around them mm -hmm. that made them look like little cottages and little people? Well, does the aqueduct still run through there? Mm -hmm. Well, we were just the house the other side of the aqueduct, not on the lower part of Washington, up no. the higher end of it, the higher, the higher, end, the higher yeah. side. But I think the house is down now. Okay, so it, it's no longer there. Um, all right, when your father went to Zinsser Chemical to work, um, you were in grammar school at that point, or were you in high school? No, I guess I'm still in grammar school. Still in grammar mm -hmm. school. Do you remember? Anything about while he worked at Sensor Chemical, what he would describe his job? What did he do there? Made all, they made all sorts of dyes and things like that. He used to come home with his head, hands so red and all, you know, from working with the dyes. Uh -huh. Sensor Chemical. And then they went into in the laboratory. They made medicines and different things during the war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he was in the uh, place just as a factory hand. Okay, so that's why his hands would be all right. stained when he would come home. Was he ever able to get the dye out of his hands? Oh, yes. He's it would wash out? I'm sure. Uh -huh. were, they, were they making dyes for paint? Yes, they made them for paints and made them for all sorts of things. And during the war, they made an awful lot of stuff. So he was working there during World War One, then, right? Which was 1914 to 1918? Mm, I guess he was. He was I believe so, yeah. I think he was still with the Zinter Chemical. Okay. He retired from there. Surely he worked there. Well, he he did, so yeah. he worked there most of his life and after the coachman uh, job. Uh, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did, um, do you remember him ever talking about them making mustard gas? Oh, yes. Oh, really? They did it down there. You, you sure? Yeah. Yeah, what, sure. what did he say? Oh, I don't know. He never t said too much about it, but he would, uh, I mean, uh, I, I don't know if I ever heard it from him. Outsiders used to say they were making, you know, mustard gas and things down there, but I don't think my father ever mentioned anything what they made. Do you think he liked the job down there? Did he enjoy it? Did he talk much well, about he it? He retired from there at 80-something. So he lived, lived, a, lived a, a long life and mm -hmm. worked quite a few years down there, yeah. then, right? Um, do you remember going to anything as a child with Zinsser Chemical put on, like a company picnic or a Christmas party or any kind of activity? I don't think they did too much of that. But I know the Zinger girls used to always stop in and see us when we were little kids because everybody felt my red curly hair. Oh, oh so <laughs> that, was a touch <laughs> that was a big rage, huh? Were you the only one of all your sisters that had red hair? Yeah, no. Uh, Lillian and Catherine and me. I think we were the only three that had red curly hair. And then Jane, Carol and Jane were my oldest, just one, and Gwendolyn, she had darker hair. Lillian had red hair, like mine, and Catherine, and myself. Dorothy and Evangeline didn't. So you, you were known as the, the redheads then yeah, of the neighborhood. Right, right. Okay. Um, let's go back to school and, and when you were growing up here in Hastings. Do you remember having a favorite subject or a teacher that you were especially fond of? Oh, can you remember? Yeah, we, we had several teachers. It was Miss Marr and Miss Van Ostrand and uh, Miss Coughlin in high school. I only went two years to high school. I didn't stay and graduate because all the boys were going into the service and the girls were all leaving. You know, there wasn't too many that graduated and went the full ter four terms in high school. In other words, you didn't finish because you were more or less expected to go to work? Or right. Uh -huh. Both. And that's when they had the little ammunition plant down the north end of the anaconda. Oh, and tell I us about that. 
Hmm? Tell, tell us and about I, that. I worked there for all the three or four girls on our street. Our boss, Mr. Ernie, I think it was, Lipton Tower Ridge across the street from, from us. And uh, a couple of the girls lived down the street. The two Masterson girls went down and worked in the plant. So I went over and spoke to Mr. What was his name now? I can't remember. He lived there in Tower Ridge on the second street up. Uh -huh. And uh, asked him if he, would, you know, I was just, I guess I was just 18. He asked me how old I was, and so I would be eligible to work in a factory. So I went down and worked in the ammunition plant for a while. So this would have been then right, uh, if you were 18, it would have been right after World War One, then, right? Oh, no, it, was, it was during the war. It was that during the war. Yeah, yeah. During during World World War I. yeah but I guess they took them on at 16 or 17. Uh -huh. then, I mean. And what did you do there? What kind of Well, they had little, little bullets, little shells, and they had a, on a machine I worked. I had, you know, there were girls that side and this side. There was a big machine, a big wheel going around, and there were things that came down and pressed down into the holes on the with a, like a big plate with you know, steel, you know, the thick, with little holes for the bullets, for the shells. And we would have a box of shells, and you just drop them, and these holes of the machine would go around automatically. And then at the end of the, when it got around there, this machine would come down and punch them down into a pail. Uh -huh. A bucket. <laughs> really? And then they would be all ready to be shipped out at that no, point? No, they, they, they would go to another room, and they would put the lead inside it. Ah, oh, so these, these were just, just the shells. shells. Yeah. I see. It didn't have any kind of ammunition in them no, or anything at that no, point. No, no, ah. no. Just little, uh, like little tin shells or uh, copper shells or something. It was on a big plate. Uh-huh. And did you work there for a long time? Until, until the war was over, Until the war was yeah. over. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Because all our boys in our class left to go in the service. And the, the girls, and, and several of our girls went down to put an application in there and they sent for it and we went down and we made twelve dollars a week or something. Well like I was that. going to ask you, did yeah. you remember how much right. you made? Twelve dollars yeah, a week. I think. Now were you still living um, with your parents at that point? Mm -hmm. You were all you were all still at home then. Oh right. Would you were you expected since you were coming from a large family to contribute to the house? In other words, did you have to turn the twelve dollars over to your parents or was that money for you to keep? Um, we used to give them ten dollars and keep the two, and keep the two for yourself. Mm -hmm. And what right. do you, what would you use the two dollars oh, for? Oh, we used to. Oh, I used to sew a lot. I buy material and make dresses. And uh, I was always interested in hats. I'd go, we'd take a trip. There's another friend of mine. She worked down there also, and uh, she used to uh, have good ideas about trimming hats. So I ended up in, as a milliner. That's well, how you got into the business. Right. Oh. We, you know, buy the store hats, and, and then, of course, Catherine and <laughs> all my sisters who were younger, Lillian and all, would trim the hats for them. And then how would you sell them? You'd sell them just oh, to the stores? Just for our family and friends. Uh -huh. They'd buy them to you, and I got into making hats. And that's how you got into doing it. So then right. after you finished then working uh, at this ammunition factory, is that when you went down to Manhattan and got right, your job right, as, an, as right. a milliner? Another friend of ours was going down. She was older, and she, well, in fact, her son went with my sister later on, her cousin, I mean, Squire. I've named him Squire. Did you hear anything about him? No, they didn't think so. My sister, well, she, they're, they're up in uh, Baltimore. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I have two sisters in Baltimore, Jane and Gwendolyn, mm -hmm. and uh, Al Squire was related to uh, my doing something wrong. No, no. <laughs> uh, his cousin came down, and she was a very nice, tall person. And she took my sister and I. We'd never been to New York, down to New York, and to a milliner place. And we both started working down there <laughs> to a friend of. He wound up marrying my sister, Al Squire, the cousin. Oh, <laughs> really? Uh-huh. So you and your sister went down and both got the job. You got a job in New York in a millinery place on 38, 39th Street and 5th Avenue. And were these, was this place making hats for some of the department stores? Or yes. were they making hats for smaller boutiques? Or? They used to have uh, 
buyers come in, the big show, they, the big show I used to sew for that too. They made great, you know, big couches and everything, and uh, had dolls in the corner for the, in the show. Mm -hmm. And then they would uh, have the buyers come in. And a couple times I went in and modeled the hats for the buyers because some, one of the girls were absent, so we used to. But I worked at a table with a designer, and around the table were about six girls. They had like three big bins, or not bins, but uh, hallways like. Uh -huh. And there were three designers, and they each had about six or eight girls under them, and I worked with one of them. Now, would you start a hat and complete it to the finish, or would you just do one certain aspect no, of the hat? The hats, no, we did all of it. If it was made of taffeta and uh, maline and things like that. Mm -hmm. But they had a, at the other end of the building on 39th Street, they had a factory where the men made the straw hats. And used to sew, you know, get the straw in uh -huh. the bundles uh -huh. and make them sew them around and around. Then they would bring them to our table and our designer would pin on the stuff or uh, different things and, and then we would sew them. And we would sew them. What, do you remember what your favorite style was that you were working on? And to, what were the styles like then? And, well, and were, this was in the 20s, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, they were mostly like, well, I don't think now, now they, don't, they won't wear most felt hats now. And, uh, but we made velvet hats. And uh, in the summertime, we made uh, straw hats of Malina, uh, the horsehair the horse hair with mm -hmm. braid. Mm -hmm. And we would sew them together. And, and did they have flowers on yeah, them? And the, the, the designer would pin the, just whatever, when we finished the hat, she would pin on the trimming and we'd sew the trimming on, then we'd have to line it. Well, the first thing in millinery, we had to learn how to make the lot, hat linings, a bias piece of material with the top, and that was our first job. Oh, so that was like working, starting at the bottom and working right. your way up. Right. I see. Yeah. Oh. Well, good. So now all this time you are still living in Hastings mm -hmm. and commuting back and forth right. every day on right. the train or on train. the trolley or no. train on the train. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what time? What was a typical day like for you? Like what time would you get up in the morning and oh, get yourself I think down we to work? Oh, I get the seven fifty six train down four minutes of eight. We had to be to work at work at nine, mm -hmm. and then we'd have a lunch hour and we'd live right up. <laughs> work right upstairs with the chefs at Sheriff's store downstairs. Ah, and so, so you down and But lunch. we would take, you know, there was a lot of little lunch houses, uh, stores around 38th and 39th Street mm -hmm. and 6th and 7th Avenue. Well, that still is the millinery district yeah. in, in Manhattan right. now, right? That same area right. is still there. We were just yeah. down the street from Lord and Taylor's. They're on 5th Avenue, and we were down 38th Street right down mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And we used to go up to uh, when they would get a new shipment of hats in, the designer would take some, a couple of girls each different times up to see what the new hats were like, you know. Oh. And we'd go back and draw something or get a, you know, something that we would know what they looked like. And then kind of, I worked at a table with a designer. I was, and then they had a, another large room where they had copies. Oh, the girls would copy the designs. We would make the first hats, and then they would take them out to the room, and when they were, had orders for those hats. So they people. would mm, copy the ones that you had made, right. but you were kind of in the original. You know, the first one. Design. Yeah, the first one. So it was three different. Kind of exciting. Oh, it was nice. I liked it. I, I always liked to sew and, and do things like that. So this was a natural outlet for you. Now, what, um, what, in terms of years, like how many years were you working down there before you, you met your husband and, and got married? Do you remember? I was married. Nineteen ninety three. I don't even have it down, but I was born. I was married in nineteen. 23. You were 22? When yeah, you got right, married? right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You were born in 1901, <laughs> so you were 22. I should remember all this. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult. Long. Okay, now when you got, you got married, and mm -hmm. did you still stay with your millinery job down in the city, or did you just start to bring up your family? 
took a three month trip to Europe for honeymoon. Oh, how nice. My husband had people over there, my mother and father both had people over there, so we were gone all that summer. Oh, how nice. So, uh, what a nice trip. Yeah. And I have cousins, and I still can uh, write to my cousins. You know, my mother was from England, but not from the same town as my husband was. She was down farther near uh, Land's End. Oh, I see. Uh huh. And you know, your husband's family came. Uh, was it, your husband was born in England, or did he? Yeah, they were the, No, they were in, more in the teaching line. His father was a gardener on a big estate. Uh -huh. You know what a big estate, and they had greenhouses with all the kind of different fruits and flower, everything there. And I, we stayed three months up there for our honeymoon. Oh, how and nice. Then, because I had, my mother came from there, mother and father came from southern England, and so... This was like going home. Right. Did you ever go to Hastings, England? Did yes. you ever go and visit? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I have a cousin that lived not too far from there now. I wouldn't show you, dare show you the picture that I had to... I went back a couple of times. Since my husband died, I've gone back with my grandson. And bending over, looking for shells and all, I snapped my picture. Oh. I have it there, and I thought I wouldn't dare show anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> or he knows how to get his grandmother's goat, huh? <laughs> That's for sure. But we used to, um, yeah, you know, go out on the beaches and, and I would and look for shells. And, and, yeah, yeah. I have a cousin over, uh, I mean, a niece over there now who's a school teacher. I think she retired last year or this year. She's been out here too. Well, that's a very nice part of England, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so you came back from your honeymoon. We're mm -hmm. just trying to retrace a few steps here. You came back from your honeymoon and then set, settled in Hastings? Mm -hmm. You settled in Hastings? Went across the bridge in a little apartment over there, the other side of <laughs> Washington Avenue. Okay, now when you say across the bridge, do you mean on the other end of town, closer to Washington Avenue? Right. Okay. Did that area have a particular name? Was that known as, as, as a, a particular part of town? Because there were different areas in Hastings. People called, um, you know, River Riverview Manor, and then oh, yeah. Tower Ridge, mm -hmm. and then there was another, uh, there were uh, a couple of other different names, Pine Crest. And mm -hmm. Did the area you live in have a particular name? No, it was Warburton Avenue. It was a four-family house, and we lived two families on each side. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, and at that I point, the house is still there. Is it? I believe. Is it really? You don't remember the number of the house. That's not important. That's okay. No. Just that made it was just off Washington know. Avenue. There's mm -hmm. a little cottage down there. There's a four-family house. Probably is still there. I think you went into the Malala, did you, or the, mm -hmm. one of the Oleris? Maybe. Uh huh. And uh, she lived. Uh, they lived. Uh, he was two families on top and two downstairs. We had the front entrance and the back entrance. Uh -huh. So that's where you settled and that's where you started to bring up your family. So you gave, you didn't work in the city anymore? No, I didn't work that? anymore after I got married and came back. Uh, let me see now. Then we lived on, we did, I didn't live at home. We lived uh, uh, in that little house. And then we went up to Broadway and the, and the little two-family house up there. My sister was married, Gwendolyn was married in the meantime. and. She lived downstairs and we lived upstairs, and that's where my first son was born. And that's Walter. Walter, Walter who currently lives in Chicago, who works for UPI. UPI. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Walter was born, and um, then how long after did you have your your other son, George? When was he was he born? Close after, close. Before. I don't know. Get these things. Is there a big difference in age between no, the boys? Um, Frank, uh, I think he was about uh, four years old when, when George was born. Uh -huh. I should have it down here. Well, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, a, there's about a four years difference then between the boys' ages. Well, he was born in 1925. George was born in 1928. Okay, so three years <laughs> difference. Yeah, yeah. There's your answer. Okay. I have it all Okay, now I've you had said... for so long. I know, well, that's a good way to do it, is to yeah. keep track. All right, then you said, so Wally then had um, two children? Yeah. And George had... Four. Four children, so mm -hmm. you have a total of six grandchildren. Grand grandchildren. Okay, and then now how many great-grandchildren? Well, five. Oh, great-grandchildren. Yeah. yeah, there it is. David has three. 
Uh -huh. That's George's son. Okay. Molly had two. Oh, George had four. Their names were David and Nancy. And I have five, five grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Great -grand grandchildren. Uh -huh. Okay, so and then one lives in Alaska? Yep. Do you have down there? One, Nan, um, George's son is up in Alaska. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that's why I wrote it down here. Uh -huh. And he married a person, an Eskimo girl, that had a son. So I have pictures of him in there. Oh, well, that's the picture that uh, um, is in the line right, of death. Right. Yes. She was married before and had this boy, and I... I think her husband died. I don't know what happened, but anyhow, Glenn is married to her now. Oh, how and nice. has the one Eskimos grandson. Oh, son. oh <laughs> That's nice. Glenn. It's a nice yeah. picture. Tell me a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. Now you said earlier that you were um, uh, interested in the in the veterans of foreign wars. How did you become interested in that well, my organization? My husband was a member when he came back in the service. He was in the First World War. When he came back in the service, he joined the VFW down here in Hastings, and then uh, I, I joined, and I'm a member of the... And the past president, I'm and... past president, and I'm going to ride one of the cars on Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have a uniform that you... Well, I've had so many of them, I don't know what they're going to wear. One time we had blue ones, and now we have tan ones, but as long as you wear... I don't think they fit me anymore, and I gave somebody away, um, as long as I wear the cap. I have to find out if they were in the Navy cap or what, and I'll ride in the car, so. Oh, nice. So. Oh, good boy. <laughs> Two of our tape, and today again, May 18th, 1988, we were at the home of uh, Mrs. B. Martin, uh, 98 Rosedale Avenue here in Hastings, and Mrs. Martin has just uh, told us how she'll be riding in the Memorial Day Parade as the past president of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. And now we'll continue, Mrs. Martin, if we could, to get a little bit more information on Hastings and tell us if you could a little bit, before you went down to work in the city as a milliner, can you remember a little bit about the waterfront and what it looked like during the days that your husband worked there or maybe your father worked there? Can you describe it physically a little bit about what it actually looked like? Well, we didn't go down that way too much. We went to Dobbs Ferry to bathe, to swim. swimming up in Dobbs Ferry because of all the factories, you know, were down at the waterfront and we didn't go down there. Did you ever go to the um, Tower Ridge Yacht Club and go swimming or boating? Uh, yes, my brothers had a, no, they, I'm wrong, they had a boat, but it was down at the Corinthian Yacht Club in Yonkers. Oh, I see. So it wasn't the... It wasn't the Hastings. Tower Ridge, Tower Yacht, Ridge Club. Yacht Club. Yeah. But you yourselves and your sisters and brothers would all go up to, you said, to Dobbs Ferry to beach. do to the beach up there. Right. Was that a nice beach? And oh, yes, they had a nice beach up there. And how was the water? Was it clean? Mm-hmm. A lot of the women from Hastings. Now you interviewed Lynch? Uh, I think someone else was, will oh, be. Uh -huh. Well, his mother used to go up and take her family, Mrs. Lynch from Washington Avenue. They lived on Washington Avenue. And Mrs. Lyons, and we walked to Dobbs Ferry. You'd walk up there. Now, how long would that take to get? Oh, in the summertime, we'd be tired when we got to sit on the beach for a while and then go in and swim and then walk home again. Oh, I see. Oh. oh. And you remember because the Because Hastings had no, really no good beach. You know, I mean, with the factories and everything, there, they weren't allowed to go. Although boys did go down there and swim. Because George, my son, when he was growing up, there were several boys here in the village that used to go over and work at Mount Hope Cemetery in the summertime, and they'd come home. We lived in the house that he'd take his bag with his, that he used to take to work over there and get his bathing suit and, and, and put his bathing suit on, I guess, because there was no other place, and they'd go down and jump off Hastings Dock and swim. Wow, oh, it was a little closer than Dobbs Ferry, I yeah, guess, right. right, if you wanted a yeah. quick swim. And he, through the summer months, a few boys that were, lived around here worked over in the cemetery. I see. So that was like a good summer job for yeah. someone as they were And then up. they would go down to, in the Hudson after, but when they come home and uh, go down the elevator, I think they got caught a couple of times going work in the elevator themselves, you know, going down from oh. the baggage bin down there. Oh, really? <laughs> and they weren't well, supposed they were, to do that? No. 
it's supposed to walk down the steps, not take the elevator down. Uh, but of course, one of them was related to the policeman here in town, and he did uh, run the elevator, I suppose. I think he saw his grandfather doing it, so he did. Well, anyhow, uh, they were only, uh, you know, warned not to go near the elevator again, so they walked down the steps and walked near Tower Ridge Yard Club. Well, that's funny, because I've heard from different people, like Dan Ryle, that they, the boys would go swimming, mm -hmm. and they would go down in tower in the Tower Ridge Tower. Yacht Club. And, but Dobbs Ferry was also mentioned, but I think that was more for families uh -huh. and, and young Dobbs Ferry had a nice beach, mm -hmm. yeah. But you remember the waters being very clean and mm -hmm. very uh, pleasant and very refreshing yeah. during well, the summers. When, when the boys were growing up, they didn't go too much down here because uh, we used to always take trips to Rockaway by boat and things like that through the summertime. And okay, I guess at this point I just was wondering if you could um, tell us a little bit in your recollections about what the social life was like for you as growing up, as a young girl growing up in terms of when you were an adolescent. You said you went to high school for two years. Did, did you ever have any dances or were there any oh, things yes. that the church provided or anything that the Protection. school did? Protection Hall had dances every Saturday night. Now, was that the fire station? Uh, the, yeah, right on Warburton Avenue. And near, there were different companies or different organizations from Yonkers used to come up and uh, run them off. In fact, the lady that lives downstairs said that her husband used to play in the band for the, in Protection Hall. And um, then we would go out there. But we, my father would come and meet us at a certain time. We wasn't allowed to stay. We wasn't dating at that time. It was just boys from school and different ones, but we had to be home at 11. My father would start walking out to escort us home. Oh, would he come down to the dance, to the protection dance hall? Yeah, well, we only lived on the ma in that house on Maple Avenue when we went there. So it was just a it's short just walk right, away. Right. I see. And then there was a picnic ground across the on Washington Avenue where they used to have dances and things through the summertime and entertainment, uh, well, not entertainment, but bands come from different places and play there. Well, I think I read in the, uh, one of the, about Jack Lynch telling you all about that. Was that dancing on the aqueduct? Uh, it was a big pavilion owned by the Anaconda, I believe. Yeah, and it was a, a band from Yonkers would come up in the little shed that was built at the end of the dance pavilion and uh, every Saturday night through the summer they had dances there. Mm -hmm. So we used to walk over and we lived, lived in a little cottage down by the playground. My father used to come over and meet us. <laughs> He's sure to come home. And make right. sure that you were respectable and that right. you were coming right. home when you were supposed to, go to, to be. Sunday school the next morning, you know. Did you meet your husband at one of the dances? No. Um, See, my mother and father came from England also, and on Washington Avenue, almost just up the street a little way from the uh, society. The Hayes, the Historical Society. Right. Uh, there was a boarding house, and they used to, my husband lived in an apartment down on Warburton Avenue with a family. And uh, this Mrs. Malloy had a boarding house there, and he used to come there to eat. And he met another fellow there from England that we knew when used to go to our church. And he came from the same part of England that my husband came from. So he got acquainted and told the other one, and told my husband, that there was a family up on Main Street who came from England. So he came around to see my father, and they used to always talking about different things on the other side. And then one day he asked me for a date. So our first date was, Taking a trolley, he didn't, nobody drove, not at that time. My father didn't have a car either. He later got a little Ford car. But uh, we used to go, to the fir my first day, he came over and used to talk to my father and mother on the front porch there in the, on Main Street about different things in England and everything. And one day, I happened to be there, and he asked me if I'd like to go to a show, uh, go to Yonkers to the uh, Warburton Theater at that time or Hamilton movies. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about those? Mm -hmm. Did you never knew about those? No. Well, they were on Main Street, Hamilton movie one. So I, so he dated me, and we went down there, and down, and then he started coming around all the time. That's how I met him, through... Really, through your parents? 
through my parents talking about different places in England that they both knew about, you know. Now, is he much older than you were? Well, he was 10 years older. He was 10 years old. Nine, old. almost 10. I see. So how long did you date, and did he court you before you got married? Oh, I guess but well, we, we had a Hastings movie here at that time. And we used to, every time they had a good picture there, they'd come over and ask me if I wanted to go with the movie. So I guess I dated a year before we got married. Uh -huh. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> so then, then, then you went for the long honeymoon right. in England, right? Now, at that point, was he working for uh, the Hastings, Hastings, Hastings Pavement? Right. And what did he used to t say about the job down there? Did he Oh, it was a dirty, oily job. He was in the machine shop, but he clothes and everything was... But he did. He lived with a family down on Warburton Avenue, the Browns, and uh, sent his laundry, all his laundry out. And what actually did he do? Did he did he repair the machines? I in think the so. Yeah, there was all new machines, and you know they made the asphalt blocks. Uh huh. Now did and he continue working there after you got married? Yeah. He he still worked mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Did he retire from there? Yeah. Yeah, he retired from there. I think. I think they went out of business. They went out of business, yeah. yes. Yeah, well that's when he left. And then, of course, his father was a gardener on a big estate in, in England, and he knew an awful lot about gardening, so he used to garden for all the people up here in Hudson Heights and all around here. Oh, so this is what he did then after after, it, after right. Hastings Pavement closed down. Right. So he got a job as a gardener. Yeah. Oh, right. it was a, kind of a natural offshoot of what he had learned living from in England his, from his right, father. Right. Oh, I see. Now, uh, where were you living uh, at the time then that your sons were born? Again, you said that, and he was working for Hastings Pavement at that point too? Yeah. When your both sons oh, were born? Oh, we were living on Main Street uh, next to, um, I was living in an apartment. There were two apartments in a, a store on Main Street with a man living downstairs, him and his wife that had a shop, woodworking or something. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know... Uh, Where the Hastings uh, Home Workshop is now? No, I don't think that's on Main Street, is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, it was just up the street from there. Mm -hmm. There was four cottages. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. They're still there. Uh -huh. uh, where, where, uh, where Riolo's Realty is. Next Riolo's. to it. A little right, further up. Right. Uh-huh. Well, we're in the house next door to Riolo's. Oh. Riolo's live, Riolo's live there, and then I think they went into the real estate business in front of their house. Do you remember any of the shops that were still there? Like when you, you said you didn't go back to work once you became a mother, were you um, doing shopping locally then in the village? And mm -hmm. do you remember some of the mm -hmm. shops and yeah, some of the was, shopkeepers? The Jufers was still down at the corner. Are they there? No, I don't no. think so, no. No, I think it's a sweater shop or something like that down there. Uh, Riola's butcher store was on Main Street, and A&P was on Main Street. and. Uh, but not the big one likes down here, but just a, a, a small little grocery, market. Yeah, mm -hmm. market. And, uh, and Ferrer was uh, fruit and vegetable mm -hmm. and uh, shots or shoots, S C H U T Z. some people call them shoots and some shots. And what did and he, butcher he shop. was the butcher. Uh -huh. And Ferrer's uh, grocery and uh, vegetable store was next door. And would they deliver things to you if you needed them yeah. delivered? Mm -hmm. I understand they had a very good reputation. The Ferreras brothers, yes. Mm -hmm. They the two brothers were. And they were very fair in their dealings mm -hmm. with people right. and you always knew right. that you were going to get your money's worth. Well, in fact, when Wally grew up and was looking for jobs around town, he worked in Ferreras for a while, my oldest son. Oh, he did? Yeah, just out of school or after school, he used to work in there, you know. What did he do, deliveries or? Uh, no, he didn't drive or anything. He just uh, waited on people who came in the store. Everybody came with their baskets or their bags, you know, at that time. It wasn't uh, supermarkets or anything oh, like no. that in Hastings. Did you have things delivered like eggs and milk and? Well, uh, my husband would do the shopping on weekends and things like that. And you were more or less taking care of the children then? Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Taking them back and forth to school mm -hmm. and right. involved in their activities yeah, and things right. like that and then being involved with, with yeah. the, uh, the VFW. Did you belong to any other social organizations, let's say through the church or anything? Did you? You said you, as a child, you had gone to Sunday school, but did they have any well social groups for yeah, the church? Yeah, uh, Sunday afternoons, two o'clock. We used to have a junior, uh, junior endeavor society. Mrs. Thompson was the 
she uh, was a pastor's wife, and she had a Sunday school class, and, and then we used to have picnics up on the lawn and different things like that. And Which now, they still do. They still do that now? Yeah. Now, this is the First Reformed Church is the one that's... On the corner, Main Street and Broadway. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I guess that was a pre that had a pretty large following. Yes. A lot of older and families the, from Hastings. Right. And the Fraser sisters that lived up on old Broadway were members, or they gave a lot to the church. I see. I see. So that really played a real important part in your life. And I'm mm -hmm. sure, did your boys go to Sunday school there, too? Oh, yes. And they mm -hmm. were all mm -hmm. involved in it, too. Right. All our family. I mean, look, there were ten of us, and, and eight of us went to Sunday school at one time. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, probably made up one Sunday to, school class. I went to school. <laughs> When, uh, I think the kindergarten teacher, Ms. Schaefer, was <laughs> the kindergarten teacher there. And of course, every year there was another one going to Sunday school. Oh, no, not another Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> because they, you were all a year apart, just huh? about. But they were all well-behaved boys. I mean, they never got into any trouble. My brothers didn't in some school. In fact, the girls all were, were more <laughs> bold than they were. <laughs> the boys were, were more the timid ones. Did any of your brothers ever work down at Anaconda or... American Brass uh, or anything? My any brother Frank, he passed away now, but um, he worked in the Zindra Chemical Works. He worked down there too? Yeah, right. At the same time your father was working there? Or he, was he it might, later? It might have been. No, I think he worked out the part of the time of, uh, my father was down there. It was Frank and Henry. I think they both went to work down there. That's your other brother? Yeah. Uh-huh. Do they just work down there? Uh, part time or did they, no, they while they were well going they, to school or no not while they were going to school after they left school I guess there were lots of odds and ends of jobs I don't think they were well Henry was very active, knew a lot about machinery and different things like that but I don't know if it was in the packing room or what it was where they worked do you remember if they talked very much about their jobs, or your father talked very much about their jobs, and what if they said they liked it, they didn't like it, no, they wished they were doing something else? Yeah, right. They wasn't too enthused about it, I don't think. Why but do you think that was? I don't know. I guess there was a lot of older men there, and I guess for first job they didn't care too much for that. I understand there were a lot of people that worked down there um, who were immigrant yeah, um, families that, uh, that came in. Yeah, did, did they I ever talk so. about that? No, no, they didn't say too much about it. Of course, uh, I don't know. I guess we all <laughs> talked at once at the table. My mother, <laughs> would you please stop and eat your supper? <laughs> With a big family, it's kind of like that. You all have something to say, right? Right. 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 I know. I come from a big <laughs> family too, so I. No, yeah. And yeah. Did you know, was, did they find out who was going to do the dishes. Oh, yes, and it was usually the girls that yeah. ended up doing the dishes. But after a little while, I think my mother's women's lib prevailed, and we, the boys ended up doing them, too. So how was it in your house? The, yeah, did like, the boys have to help? Oh, yeah, they had to help them take out the garbage and different things like that. Those were the chores. What, what were the girls' chores? Huh? What were the girls' chores? What did you have to oh, do? Oh, we had to wash, and wash the dishes, and one dry them, and one put them up in the closet. <laughs> and help your mother with the laundry, maybe, oh, sure. and do different things like right. that. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, do you remember any special events that went on here in the village when you were growing up? Do you remember any kind of, uh, you know, Christmas, any special events around Christmas time? Well, Christmas, or? Uh, church always had a Christmas party and Sunday school. And, and of course, we uh, could all pick out books, and Dr. Thompson, the minister, would go to the city and, and produce, and then they'd have a Christmas party, and we'd all get a book and a box of candy. Oh, how nice. Yeah. And that was every year? Every year. Uh -huh. All the time. Would you go Christmas caroling? Uh, no. Well, I think some of them might have. But uh, But you didn't? No. Personally. Was, our choir, I think, used to go on cri uh, Christmas caroling. But uh, no, we wasn't allowed out too late at night. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, you, you had a curfew. <laughs> I know. Even then, huh? Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, would you say that the physical part of Hastings has changed a lot over the years. Now, you've lived here 85, 84 years. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there, there have been a lot of changes in terms of what the waterfront looked like when you were growing up, and then the factories were there, and it looked a little different, and what it looks like now? How do you compare what it looked like when you were growing up with what it looks like now? 
Well, we never went down uh, yeah. uh, across there very much. When we went swimming, we went to Dobbs Ferry because, of course, there were no beaches down here. Uh -huh. So you don't have too much of an impression no. of, of what it was no. like. But do you remember the Palisades, though? You can oh, still sure. see the Palisades and, mm -hmm. and see how those... And I've gone over in the ferry from Yonkers and, and walked up the Palisades, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. That's a nice walk, isn't I'd it? I'd go all the way up the top and look over the go sea Hastings. It's beautiful yeah. to do. We just right. did that this weekend. Uh -huh. no, we didn't take the ferry because the mm -hmm. ferry isn't there anymore. Oh, no. Oh, well, you we drove, drove over, over yeah, right. and, then, right. and then went up, yeah. Um, when you look back on your years here in Hastings, would you say they were really happy years? Oh, yes. I think they having a big family, because at night, dish it all away, put everything we had to put back, and we'd play checkers, and we'd play <laughs> different things, you know, dominoes and checkers, and all around the big round table. So and you always had a lot of things to do. Nine o'clock, get ready for bed. <laughs> and then it was... And I mean, with such a big family, we didn't need outsiders. Although we all had friends in school and everything, but we ne and we did have a few at our house. You know, as we grew older, we'd have girls at the house and have a little party and everything. Do you remember but if you had a best friend in school? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, boyfriend? Girlfriend? Girlfriend? Yeah. Uh, Charlotte Rohrbach. I think don't know if you interviewed any of the Rohrbach. I don't think anymore in Hastings. She married Dr. Stewart in Tarrytown. Oh. Do you think is she still living up there? I really don't know. I've lost track of her. So you're not really sure. Sure. And the Neen family that belonged to our church, Harriet lives in New Jersey, and uh, the Meinzers from our church take uh, me out once in a while. We go out. I haven't been this year, but because I was laid up and was sick there for a while, so I didn't go traveling very much. Oh, I see. But, but you're still friendly with some of these oh, yes, people, and they're right. still around. Yeah, and Harriet and Mills is still in is that in Jersey, and the Meinzers. Uh, they still. I, I keep thinking that you're interested in that. It, it, you know, affiliated with our church group, but you aren't. I, I don't know some no. of these people. No, no. Well, they come from over from Yonkers, but they, uh, he works in our church. I mean, Mr. Mindu helps out in the church. I now. see. So he's still, you yeah. know, they're still very, very good yeah. friends. So when you look back, you think it was a really nice place to live, and how oh, would I you think so? Everybody thought uh, the visit. I mean, I had cousins in Long Island and. Um, in Bayonne, New Jersey, and they used to come to Hastings, and it's been, you know, I had cousins our age, and the, when we were growing up, and they would come and stay overnight. They liked Hastings, and especially the uh, Saturday night when they had the dancing over in the pavilion over, mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> Frank Lynch or somebody told you about that. I think I read it in the historical. Uh, every Saturday night they'd have a... A big a, dance. A, a dance and a refreshments and things like that. So that was really a, a nice thing for everybody in the community. Yeah, and you'd meet everybody there. Then in the winter times, they'd have a dance in the protection hall, and the firemen would have a dance on Saturday nights, and we were allowed to go out so, uh, that so, for so long, and then my father would come and meet us. and get you. That's when you said he used to come and pick you up. Yeah. Do you remember any, you know, having any friends of some of the immigrant families that were had moved to Hastings? Did you remember hearing other languages spoken when you were growing up? Or well, because there were a lot of German immigrants, a lot there of Italian was, immigrants. Um, they lived down on West Main Street, and they, um, well, I think he just passed away, uh, Gustav Lina. Did you see in the paper? I, I didn't see that. Something either. about it, but his family, Susie and Gus, uh, we were friendly with them. And were they in school with you? Yeah, yeah too. In the classes, uh, one with my sister and uh, I think he was younger, but he, he passed away, I saw, in the New York paper. He uh, was, worked for some drug company or some druggists or something. Oh, I see. Gustav Lienhardt. And, uh, but you don't remember them speaking. In other words, did all the German kids hang around together and just speak German, or all the oh, Russian no, kids? No. or Were they pretty much intermingled with the other children? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a lot of children that... Uh, from well-to-do parents. I mean, that have, that have beautiful homes up in Riverview Manor and different places. That was the more affluent area, I think, wasn't it? It was what? The more affluent yeah. area, more right. people who bought homes. Mm -hmm. and they call that Mortgage Hill. Well, they used to, yeah. They used to, right. yeah. But I think, wasn't that built by um, Zinsser Chemical? Well, I... There, some of their people? I thought it was more Anaconda. Man Anaconda. Anaconda, I believe, uh, with... 
had places up there, and some of the bosses and all lived up there. I see. So it was a you know a little yeah. maybe a step up for them yeah. to live up there. And then there was um, what other the, the Bretches lived up on another Pine section Crest? of huh? Pine Crest? No, that's down below. This is up uh, near River Manor. Osceola, Flower. Mm -hmm. Flower Avenue? Well, Flower Avenue is in River, and that's connected, I think. Um, oh, dear, I can't think of the name of the place now. I thought it was called um, Ossia, uh, Olinda Park? No, Olinda's over here, oh. opposite the school. Okay. Okay, I just know of Pinecrest and Riverview. Oh, Hudson Heights? No, Hudson Heights is up the hill here. Oh. When you go up the hill here, up in the back of me, is Hudson it's Heights. It's Hudson Heights. So every, every little part of Hastings really had a little bit of a name. You're right. And would you say, for instance, that the immigrant people lived in one area? What was Uniontown? What would they call Uniontown? Some of the older folks that lived in Hastings had uni lived in Uniontown, and there used to be a trolley from Main Street that went over there where the store is now and stuff. And there was a big, oh, wasn't a Hot not a hotel or a restaurant where people stayed, but a big closed-in place where every Saturday night they had music going at all, run by, you know, different orchestras from Yonkers and all would come up, and a lot of the German people went over that way. I see. So they were living over there, too? Yeah, they were living over there, and different things would come up right at the corner where the little store is. Yes. New Union Time, well, right in the, it's all built up now, and it goes down where you can get into Yonkers that way, uh -huh, you know. Uh -huh. But this was, a, a, they called it um, Little Coney Island. Oh, Little Coney Island. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, because it was more, had more of an amusement park. Amusements and things like that. And Sunday afternoons or, or Saturday evenings you go over and they'd have all sorts of games, ring toss and, and different things. And families used to go over, take the children until it got dark, and then walk back. Did you ever go? Did I your family go? Your father used to take, take you over? Yeah, right. Oh. And different, different games and stuff. That they called it Little Coney Island. <laughs> well, they had quite a diversion of, or a, a real dichotomy of people who used to live here. So mm -hmm. I would think that there were all sorts of different interests and things that people brought over with yeah, them from Yeah, And of course, there was a trolley cultures. that left come up Warburton Avenue to Main Street. And then there was the Uniontown trolley you could get on there for five cents and take a ride over the Uniontown, you wouldn't have to climb up the hill. Now, is that intersection where the policeman used to stand? Did there used to be a policeman who was always on duty down there at that intersection? In Hastings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, down at the corner of Main Street. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you remember who that was? Wasn't there a, a policeman? Colonel? I'm not sure of his, uh, his name. Someone else was telling me about him. They said he was a big early guy, and if there were any children sometimes who from Uniontown across the bridge used to come over, mm -hmm. he'd say, get over back on your oh, other O'Leary? side. I think so. Oh. I think Mr. so. Mr. O'Leary. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember right. that? Do yeah, you remember sure. him doing that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, good. Okay. Um, well, I think we're just about getting to the end of the tape, so I think I just want to ask you, um, Mrs. Martin, if there's anything else you'd like to add to your little um, reminiscence today. You said you really enjoyed Hastings and living here and growing up here. Mm -hmm. And from what you remember of, of your husband and your father's recollections of, of working down uh, on the waterfront, that they really, uh, they probably didn't bring too many stories home, so you don't seem to have... No, I don't seem to. They never talk shop much. <laughs> they probably happened. wanted to come home and relax and yeah, not, they and not think about it. What happened down there? Is there anything else you'd like to add that might complete the picture today in terms of anything else you'd like to say about your reminiscences? Or do you think you had a pretty happy time oh, yes. of us growing up? And then on Main Street where, um, what's there now? The firehouse? That's across the street, on the left side of Main Street. There was a library where we used to go evenings. and. Uh, have games and things there. I but mean, that's no longer there no now because they built the other, the other library. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you had a, a nice long... You never lived in another town. You, you stayed in Hastings all your life. Mm -hmm. So you, you really grew up here? Yeah, I grew up went here. Went to school here? Right. Only when I went to England, I, each summer, went, as long as my husband's family was alive, we used to take a trip to Europe. 
and visit them? Would you and take your children? I had cousins. Of course, my mother and father came from there, too. And I had cousins over there. I stayed a while with each one, you know. Which yeah. was a nice way to yeah, kind of right. catch up on family right. uh, happenings yeah. and so on for and the I, year. St we still uh, communicate with each other. And they know, come right back, and they, they would come over and visit you here? And no, so they were all afraid to come here. Really? Yeah. But uh, we, I went by, well, while George's, my husband's parents were alive, we went every year. Went, I flew a couple times, and I went uh, by boat. Well, the Shore Olympic and the, the uh, Mauritania and the Berengaria. And this <laughs> was every, you'd go every year? Well, just about. Every couple of years. Yeah. And then my mother had sisters over there. I had aunts over there to visit and cousins. But none of them came over here. We always had to go over to there. Go Although my niece, my husband's niece, is, he had one sister and her husband died. And she died now, but his niece is a school teacher in England, and she comes out, and she was out last year and stayed with us, um, stayed across with my son. Uh -huh. We had more room to put her up, but we all got together. That's nice. It's nice to still keep in touch with the family yeah. on the other side. Yeah, we always did, and I have cousins that I write to all the time. They all write to me, and there were people here from, um, they were Scotch people, but they lived in the cottage over here that's owned by the same lady that owns this house. And uh, I got acquainted with them, and I went over and stayed with them. They lived up near London. But when I went over the first time, from when we got off the boat, we went, stayed in London for a couple of weeks in the hotel, and went to all the different places, so you know, <laughs> King and Queen and everything. Buckingham Palace and, and everything. And, all uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. and my son, uh, my grandson, I went, took over, uh, Two or three years ago, he's home now from college, but uh, I, he and I went and took him all around England. Oh, how nice! So he Thank enjoyed you. it all. That's nice. Pictures. I mean, I have lots of pictures where we were taken just outside Buckingham Palace. And he would, you know, I have cousins over there that I correspond with all the time. But they don't come out here. They don't. Well, they figure you're the American. You probably can right. they get don't. over there a little easier than they can. But and they always say they can't afford it. But mm -hmm. if the, if we could afford it, they could scrape money together mm -hmm. and go to. Mm -hmm. But I it's could. difficult. I think England uh, people from England, British people, really like to stay home yeah. in the summer. Yeah. They have such nice gardens. They like oh, to beautiful. enjoy them. <laughs> beautiful, really. So they're not mm -hmm. that fond of traveling. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Mott, for well, sharing your you experience. Thank you put up with me for all this, because I hemmed and hawed so much. No, you were <laughs> wonderful. This was wonderful. And we're going to uh, conclude this tape now. I think we're just about at the end. And uh, we'll just say uh, if there are any uh, further questions that um, you know you have, is there anything else you'd like to ask before we come to the end of the tape? Not really, I don't believe so. Okay. Well, thank you again for you being like so hospitable. hospitable. Um, thank you, maybe I would. And on that note, we'll end this tape.